Hey guys, so today we have another rare and limited edition video, this time for the Ram pickups. I've also done some of these in the past for other models such as the Charger, Challenger, and Chrysler 300. So for these types of videos, I check out various rare and limited edition models that were put out over the years. Each of these models was given a limited production run, usually only available for between 1 to 3 years, and each of them had their own cool features that were specific to that model. One criteria is that each of these Rams must have had limited production numbers that were publicly released, so I've included six different models that satisfy that criteria. Today we've got the Rumblebee, Daytona, Contractor Special Hybrid, Hemi GTX, Ram SRT10 variations, and the Mopar 16 Rebel. So let's get started. The first model today is the 2004 and 2005 Rumblebee, which was a limited sport truck version of the Ram 1500 with a similar Bumblebee theme to the 1968 to 1971 Dodge Super B. It was only offered on the regular cab pickups with the short bed in either 4x2 or 4x4. Before we get into the details, there was lots of confusion on just how many were produced. Originally Dodge had said that these would be limited to just 3700 units for 2004, each with their own numbered dash plaque. However, numbers started showing up above 3,700, so people began asking questions, and there was even a lawsuit filed for Chrysler doing an overrun. And for 2005, Dodge released even more, with a second swarm of these Rumblebees. A legal statement was later issued by Dodge that said, quote, Daimler Chrysler reserves the right to produce additional vehicles as related to market demand, end quote, because these were obviously very popular, so that's exactly what they did here. There were different numbers floating around, but it looks like there were roughly 9,258 of these made, as you can see by the chart. So 4,645 for 2004, and 4,613 for the second swarm in 2005. They were offered in either black or solar yellow, with the 4x4 black versions ending up as the rarest ones. These Rumblebees included a ton of custom features, including a lower body kit with a front air valence, side skirts and a rear air dam, body color taillight guards, chrome exhaust tips, 20-inch wheels, a non-functional hood scoop, a brushed aluminum fuel filler door, and probably the most noticeable feature on the exterior was the vertical stripe and B emblem, in either yellow or black at the rear of the truck. The interior was taken from the Ram SLTs, but Dodge did add a solar yellow instrument panel bezel, a yellow spear insert on the door with the Rumblebee logo, and the unique number plaque in the middle of the dash. The seats could be had in either grey leather or cloth. As for the performance, the Rumblebee featured Dodge's most powerful Hemi at the time, and it was officially called the 5.7 liter Hemi Magnum V8 at this time. So that had an output of 345 horsepower and 375 pound-feet of torque, along with a 5-speed automatic transmission. There was no performance tuning or power boost here, so the specs are the same as any other Ram with the same engine. These trucks had a rear-end gear ratio of 3.92 to 1, Towing was rated at 8,500 pounds, and gas mileage was 12 mpg city and 17 mpg highway. The performance was pretty decent for a pickup, 0 to 60 in 7 seconds flat, and the quarter mile done in 15.59 seconds. Another historic nameplate was brought back by Dodge, this time the Daytona. This came in both the regular and quad cab style, with the 6 foot 3 bed and either 4x2 or 4x4. The regular cab has molded side sills, while the quad cab has a running board. The Daytona has many of the same body modifications as the Rumblebee, like the color matching lower body kit, taillight guards, and 20 inch wheels. Again, the official production numbers get a bit sketchy with the Daytona. There were originally supposed to be 10,000 of them, but some people reported badge numbers above 10,000, while others claimed that they skipped some numbers. The most reputable data I could find shows that there were 8,698 of them produced. 5,043 in Gomango, and 3,655 in Metallic Silver. The 4x4 regular cab in Metallic Silver seems to be the rarest one, with just 627 produced. The new styling features were taken from the 1969 Dodge Charger Daytona and the Plymouth Superbird, part of the winged Aero Warriors of Mopar's NASCAR history. So on this truck, they've added a massive 11-inch black spoiler, flat black Daytona stripe running along the back, a Borla exhaust with rear side exiting twin chrome tips, and a chrome fuel filler door. Instead of the hood scoop, they have given the Daytona the SRT10 hood, but the hood scoop is not functional. On the inside, there's a body color matching center console bezel, where you can find your sequentially numbered dash plaque. And seats again are either in cloth or leather. Performance again goes unchanged to any other Ram 1500 model, with the 5.7 liter V8 Hemi engine. If you do get the towing package, the Daytona can have a max towing capacity of 9,300 pounds, and it has a payload of 1,750 pounds. There's an adjustable torsion front suspension with a huge front sway bar and big brakes, 
13.2 inch front rotors, and 13.8 inch rear rotors. Dodge claims a 0 to 60 time of 6.8 seconds, slightly less than the Rumble B. I thought I'd include the Contractor Special Hybrid in here as well. This is an interesting one, as you could argue that it was either extremely rare or never released. This was supposed to be a hybrid version of the Ram 2500 pickup that Chrysler actually built and tested for the US Army in Warren, Michigan. The powertrain was diesel-electric hybrid, with a small engine driving one set of wheels and an electrical generator powering the other, and it also had the ability to go into electric-only mode. That generator could also be used to provide 20 kilowatts of continuous electrical power that could operate equipment and power tools at remote sites. And the transmission was a hybrid, jointly developed with GM and BMW. The generator was cleaner than conventional portable ones, so that was another plus, and Dodge claimed it to get 15% better fuel economy than a normal Ram. That did come at a price though of $5,000 more. This was supposed to come out in 2004, but they reportedly had problems with the gas engine and the electric motor working together, and the hybrid didn't ever enter mass production. It was available for fleet purchasers only, but it appears like none were ever sold. The Hemi GTX was another limited edition version of the Ram 1500, made just for the 2004 and 2005 model years. It was meant to celebrate Mopar's 426 Hemi V8 engine from the past. This was an interesting arrangement, because Dodge didn't directly produce the package themselves. After a customer ordered one from the dealer, the dealer themselves would ship it out to LA West of Indiana, who did the customizations. And for this, the dealers would charge an extra $8,300 on top of the price of the truck. The 2004 production numbers were confirmed by LA West, and Mopar offered some of their awesome impact colors from the 1970s, including Hemi Orange, Plum Crazy, Sublime, and Banana Yellow. My apologies, there weren't too many pictures to be found other than the Plum Crazy, but I've tried to do my best. Of the 433 produced for 2004, the Banana Yellow and Plum Crazy were the rarest of the bunch. There were also some units produced in black and white for 2005, but the production numbers were unconfirmed for that year, most saying less than 400 in total. These were available on a regular cab or quad cab with a short box only, and the quad cabs were only available in Hemi Orange or Sublime. Along with the custom paint job, each GTX would get 20-inch American Racing Moto Chrome wheels, a new cowl blacked out hood, unique taillights, and a hockey stick stripe on the side that goes from the hood to the edge of the bed with Hemi GTX lettering. The interior got beautiful specially trimmed two-tone leather with black and matching color to the exterior. The steering wheel and engine cover were also painted to match the body. Each owner was given a certificate of authenticity, and you could find the serialized number plate on the driver's side door jam. The engine again was the same 5.7 liter Hemi Magnum V8 that was found in the other Rams with 345 horsepower and 375 pound-feet of torque. Next up is the legendary Ram SRT10. I've been wanting to do an entire video on this truck which will probably happen soon, so I'm not going to go too far into detail, but I will cover the overall specs of the SRT10 and four of the special editions of the truck. It's also worth noting that almost every Ram SRT10 can be considered limited edition since there were only 10,143 produced between 2004 to 2006. These SRT10s came standard with the Chrysler 8.3 liter Viper V10, available in a regular cab or quad cab which was introduced for 2005, both with a 6 foot 3 bed. The regular cabs had a 6 speed manual Tramec transmission, while the quad cabs had a 4 speed heavy duty automatic, and both had a Dana 60 rear axle. Power was rated at 500 horsepower and 525 pound-feet of torque. That led to some pretty impressive numbers for a truck. The regular cab could hit 0 to 60 in 4.9 seconds and the quarter mile in 13.6 seconds, while the quad cab did 0 to 60 in 5.3 seconds and the quarter mile in 13.7 seconds, just slightly slower due to an additional weight of 500 pounds. All the SRT10s came with a unique hood with a power bulge and honeycomb grill functional hood scoop. On the sides of the hood were Viper powered badges, and SRT10 logos were on the doors, along with molded kicker panels and a rear spoiler in matching body color. The interior had three audio options, all with the Infinity brand, silver trim on the doors and center stack, aluminum performance pedals, silver face gauges with Viper font and graphics, a red start button on the dash, heavily bolstered racing leather seats, and a hearse shifter for the manuals. 22-inch Viper-styled wheels were fitted with Pirelli Scorpion P305-4022 tires, and the rotors were 15 inches up front and 14 in the rear, with two-piston calipers for 04 and four pistons for 05 and 06. 
The suspension was taken from the Ram Heavy Duty and modified with Bilstein shock absorbers and performance springs, so that meant a drop of 1 inch up front and 2.5 inches in the rear. So that's the basic stuff for the SRT10 models, now let's get into those special editions. The first is the Viper Club of America edition, or VCA, with just 52 produced, but two of those were Chrysler Pace vehicles, and we're not sure where those are now. These were released at the Daytona Motor Speedway race in February of 2004, where people entered into a raffle and the winners of the raffle could purchase the VCA. The winners could also sell the vehicle if they wanted to after purchasing. These look stunning with electric blue paint and white stripes, and the engine was signed by Wolfgang Bernard, the former COO of Chrysler. As I said, 50 copies were made with a manual transmission, while two were converted into the automatic as the pace vehicles. In 2005, there was an exclusive yellow fever model, painted in solar yellow, and they ended up making 497 of those. So these versions had the solar yellow paint and a black stripe on the hood scoop area on the outside. On the inside, there was a two-tone interior with a yellow center stack, yellow door spears, yellow stitching on the seats, steering wheel and shifter, and yellow on the floor mats. These also came with a serialized dash plaque and exterior badging. Another similar yet exclusive version was a 2005 commemorative edition, which featured bright white painted SRT10s with electric blue stripes going from the hood scoop to the edge of the deck lid. The interior had blue stitching on the seat shifter and steering wheel, special floor mats, and brushed aluminum scuff plates. Just 201 of these ended up being made. The final rare SRT10 to cover is the 2006 Night Runner with just 370 copies painted in brilliant black. These had dark nickel pearl wheels, black chrome accents, unique badges, black interior bezels, and a Night Runner dash plaque as well. The last model on my list today is the Mopar 16 Rebel, which was out for the 2016 model year. Every year Mopar releases a limited edition modified vehicle, so up until this point there had been a Mopar 10 Challenger, Mopar 11 Charger, Mopar 12 300, Mopar 13 Dart, Mopar 14 Challenger, and Mopar 15 Charger again. So this time around, the Ram Rebel was up for 2016. This Rebel featured a limited production of just 500 vehicles with an MSRP of 52460 so this package was basically $2,750 more than a regular Rebel. It's also available in just two colors, Flame Red with Brilliant Black Two-Tone, or Brilliant Black Monotone, and four-wheel drive is standard. These Mopar editions usually showcase Mopar custom accessories, and this Ram is no different. This Rebel includes a blacked out lower front fascia, aluminum dual bezel sport performance hood with a matte black graphic, off-road wheel flares, 17 inch satin black wheels with 285.70 Toyo AT open country tires, and a Mopar blue and black graphic stripe on both sides of the truck and on the tailgate. Other features include powder coated skid plates for the transfer case and front suspension, black tubular side steps, a spray on bed liner, and a tri full tonneau cover with the Ram logo. On the inside, you get a glove box badge with the serialized number of your Mopar 16, stainless steel door sill guards with the Ram logo, and a custom owner's kit that has tons of features like merchandise, a brochure, Ram tool bag, and a birth certificate that highlights truck specifications, date of manufacture, and the proprietary number. As for performance, once again the truck has a 5.7 liter V8 Hemi, but this version has 395 horsepower and 4 10 pound feet of torque, and gets paired with a ZF 8 speed automatic transmission. This does have a manual shift mode, but no paddle shifters. Dealers also have the option of adding a Mopar cold air intake and catback exhaust from the factory if the customer wants it. 0 to 60 happens in 7 seconds, the quarter mile in 15.5 seconds, and gas mileage is 15 city and 21 highway MPG. So that's the end of this video guys, hopefully you enjoyed it, I tried to give as many details as possible on each model covered. Let me know which one was your favorite, and if you've had or have any of these models currently. Thanks for watching, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.